today we're working with the polyvagal system and the flight response. So when we look at that ladder, fight and flight are in the sympathetic arousal area. So if we're deeply feeling threatened, we'll often go into a freeze where we just are numb. We don't fight back. We don't run away. In order to come back into ventral vagal, a state of trust and connection, we need to come up through fight or flight. And last week we worked with feeling our anger as a way to come up. That when we can feel our anger appropriately, we may or may not express it, but we come up out of freeze into feeling the anger that's here. Then we're also much less likely to go into a fight response where we're not really acting in a way that we would like often. We feel out of control. We feel flooded. With flight, it's not so out of control usually, but it might manifest as a feeling of restlessness or I've got to get out of here or procrastination or I really don't want to do this. So we're going to look at that today. So coming back to neuroception and our perception of threat and danger, we flee or go into flight when we're not sure that we can afford to feel and see what's here. Most of our threats now are emotional, social, relational. They're with other people. Sometimes they're backed up with a threat of physical violence or social shaming, which is very common in junior high, high school, but it also happens in our adult life, happens in families, workplaces. So when we are in a flight response, we don't want to be here and we can't afford to be here. So we find a way to get away. And to counteract that, so whether we flee into an addiction, into screens, our whole culture is really set up to enable us in flight. But what counteracts that is our direct experience that it's okay to be here. So I thought today we could do a slow motion walkthrough. So before we get into the actual slow motion walkthrough, I wanted to just go over a few cues of safety. So one of the ways that we do that is we look around the room. The reason I'm bringing this up is because we're going to stir the pot a little bit. We're going to go into looking at something that makes us want to flee and then staying grounded and present in this moment so that we can counteract that flight response. So one of the ways is to let our eyes look around the room and just let our whole nervous system know there's no danger here. I could take a breath. I could relax into the chair, into the environment. Extended exhale breathing is another one. So as you're breathing out, let it go longer. When you're in a situation with other people, you could talk in longer sentences or just talk and then don't breathe in between sentences. Let it go on for a little bit and then take a deeper breath. So all of this helps to reassure the nervous system. The the longer exhales only happen when we're relaxed and feeling safe. And before you get into a situation, And you could do this now, too, if you wanted, or during that walkthrough. Notice what would help to release that edgy, restless kind of flight energy out of your body. So you could do the shaking the tree, which we do often. Take a minute or two to stand up and really shake shake the energy out of your body. You could do some kind of vigorous exercise. There's an edginess and a flight quality in this kind of energy. So we could acknowledge that and. When we know we're going to be in a situation that's difficult, we could use some of those tools to release some of that energy out of the body. I'm using a work situation here as an example. You could also use a family situation, a situation with friends, whatever that might be. So we're going to do a slow motion walkthrough of a situation that's difficult for us. As we're doing that, we're going to notice our inclination to flight, and we're going to come back and stay really grounded in this moment. So when you're selecting what you're going to work with, don't select a 10 out of 10. Somebody terrifies you, but select something that has a little bit of juice. And think ahead, who would be in this situation? If it's work, it's pretty predictable. It would be your colleagues, probably. 
maybe your boss, bosses. If it's a home situation or a family situation, it might be a big family dinner or a regular get together where there's some people there who have more social power. So notice who has the power, who fawns to the people who has the power, who does people pleasing behavior. And also who is encouraging to us who would be on our side and who might say something to belittle us or dismiss us. Let that kind of come into your mind. As you do notice your breath might have already changed. You might have noticed that you've contracted a bit through your upper back. So what we're going to do is use the predictive qualities of the brain as we go through this. And each time we go into another step, then we pause, we self-regulate, we take some breaths, we keep using these tools. So visualize yourself just before your encounter. So maybe you're on the steps of your parents' home or a social gathering or a meeting. So just before you go into the situation, see yourself in the picture. So we're not looking out of our own eyes. We're looking at an image that we visualized to represent something. We're not actually there. You could feel your feet, your seat, reminding yourself of that. And what changes in your body as you look at that image of yourself, as you're waiting for this to begin? One of the tools that we use is to tap on our forehead. And that really just bring your attention into the sound and sensation of that and let yourself know from that sensation that you're here. You're looking at an image. Take a couple of deep breaths. And then each time you start feeling more relaxed and you're breathing more smoothly, we visualize the next step. So this is a slow motion walkthrough. You could pause between each step for longer. Let yourself get regulated again. So now see yourself in the picture of when this event starts. So you're walking into the room. You're turning on the Zoom link. And so we're looking at who in the room is on our side, who is a threat to us, who helps keep us feeling safer. The way our nervous system works is that it's always going to pay more attention to the threat. So the people in the room who are your allies, it's good to also notice them. And now, as we're working with whatever it is that feels heightened about this, pick one of the people who feels uncomfortable to you and look at them like they are an image. So again, we're not looking at it necessarily out of our own eyes. We're looking at the image of ourselves in the room, in the situation, in the Zoom room. And we're looking into the face of somebody who feels like either uncomfortable or some kind of threat. This is the person who in the past has humiliated us perhaps, who has a tendency to go into a rage response. We have some edginess around them, some feeling like, I don't want to be here. Now with your eyes open, put that image into a frame. You could put it on the other side of the room and notice that there's an image the face of this person, the frame, and then the space on the outside of the frame. And you can do a couple things here. One is you can just shift your focus. So notice what's inside the frame and then notice everything else that's on the wall over there. Let your eyes shift focus a few times. You could smear the image with Vaseline to make it kind of not so readable that you can't really see it clearly. But another really great way is to take your eyes around the empty space. So start above the picture, above the frame in the empty space, and just take your eyes around the outside a couple of times in each direction. Circle the picture with your eyes. And then look back at the image again. 
often when we do that, and we might have to do it two or three times, the image itself starts to fade or get fuzzy. It doesn't feel as threatening. So relax your shoulders here. Take a few deep breaths. And again, notice, what do I need to do? What would be the most helpful? You could stand up and shake your body. You could throw that energy down into the ground. You could do some tapping. You could take a couple of deeper breaths. I want to get out of here. This doesn't feel okay to me. And then notice, you can look at that image. You can use those tools. In fact, nobody here is a threat right now. We're just doing a walkthrough. We're doing this to see what it is that's activating us and to experience calming our system down before we go to the next step. So once you're relaxed again, bring the same image into the frame and just do that until your response is less intense. So this is how our nervous system works. It uses whatever happened to us in the past to predict our safety in the future. So some of our evidence is from recently. So if you're with somebody, a family member who hurt you a long time ago, it's a little bit different than if it's with your boss who humiliated you last week. It's still a threat, and we're not saying one is a higher threat or the other, especially because things that happen in childhood, if you experience being demeaned from a parent, for instance, or a teacher, and now it's happening again in your workplace from a colleague or your boss, you're going to be more sensitive to that. You're going to take it as a higher level of threat. So our system is coming in to say, let's get out of here. It's not safe to be here. Notice what your past history is, either recent past or a long time ago in the past. And as you're doing that, notice your breath, your body. And then let's do that with another person in the room. Maybe it's not the one who is actively bullying but maybe it's the one who won't stand up for you or the one who's fawning to the boss or fawning to the person who's a bully. And do the same thing. Put it in a frame. Put it on the other side of the room. Try not to close your eyes. Keep your eyes open if you can. That helps us to visually remember that our body's safe right now. Shift your focus back and forth. Do some tapping. Trace the outside space. We're not overriding our flight response. We're just using this tool to look at the image, notice the response. And then now let's move into something that would be regulating. So you could do the five, four, three, two, one census practice if you're quite engaged with it and you need something strong. So you look around the room and name five things you can see, say it out loud or things that you can touch. You could do that practice. You could do a butterfly hug. Touch your body. Let yourself know that you're here. So a butterfly hug, you can hook your thumbs together and just kind of tap alternately on each side of your chest. Notice your breath. If you've got your teeth clenched, if you notice, you might be noticing a fight response or you've gone into freeze a little bit. Come back into this awareness. You could hold your own hand. You could stand up and shake it out. Let's come back into the awareness that what we're doing right now is we're doing a slow motion walkthrough of something that's uncomfortable for us and that it activates our flight or fight or freeze response. Look around the room again. You could look behind you as well. 
Really let yourself notice that you're safe where you are. There's nobody here right now that's thinking. So sometimes what comes up is something that's more longstanding that we might need to work with on a longer term basis. So if you, for instance, are in a situation where you can't really get away or it's not easy to get away from somebody, maybe you need your job and you have a boss who's a bully, or maybe that's quite extreme or maybe it's not so much, or you have a colleague, maybe it's a family member, your other family members know that in the past, this one person really hurt you, but they still allow them to come to the family meetings or get togethers. There's so many things that happen where we don't really want to have to disengage completely with them. So these are things that we could work with more on an ongoing basis. If we have core deficiency beliefs, for instance, that person really makes me feel like a loser. So we could work with that directly. We could set different kinds of boundaries. We could decide, I'm not going to go into that family situation unless my cousin is with me because I know they're going to support me. Or I'm going to make sure that I have a vehicle so that I could leave if I have to. I'm not going to catch a ride with somebody. So there's a lot of practical things that we can do. But doing something like this where we're working with what activates my flight response and tapping and tracing and doing those things, staying in our body in this moment. What that does is it helps us to break that trance of we just get into a flight or fight or freeze response. We don't really notice that it's happening often. We're just feeling edgy or antsy or we're feeling scrappy. So our mind believes that what we think is real especially when we have sensation in our body that's linked to that. So as we work with this ahead of time, it helps to release that out of the body. We can take some deep breaths. And it's through that that we experience that it's okay to stay. From there, all kinds of things might happen. We might uh, decide to speak up. We might decide that person isn't someone I want to spend any time with, and we set a hard boundary, or we might set something else. So let's just notice again, what you feel like right now in your body. So we're not in this situation right now. And even if we're in a difficult situation in our life right now, we also have experiences of safety that we can draw on. So we have our emotional maturity, resilience, resources that we did not have when we were children. We have options and agency that if we can draw on our strength and come up out of fight or flight, then we can see what those are and those seem much more possible. So what are your strengths? How have you worked with this in the past when you notice that you're in a flight response? What has been helpful for you? Maybe you're the person who speaks up when something really harmful is said. Or maybe you go with your coworker to the union. Or maybe you don't, that's not your style. Maybe you support them by calling them later and saying, wow, that really sucked. Or whatever it might be. And if it's you that's the one who's the target, how do you support yourself? Who do you call on for support? And if you go into a flight response sometimes, so what? It's fine. We can come back into or come up into polyvagal, into the vagus, the calm, that strength, that out of coming up, out of fight, flight, and freeze into ventral vagal. So let's take a moment just to breathe into that. What is your strength? When you notice that you feel like you want to flee, what will help you to stay? 
Notice your body and your breath. Notice the experience that you just had as you went through that inquiry. Notice the times when you felt like you wanted to, or when there was a fight, flight response that was activated, and then notice that you came back and you stayed. And then to finish, let's just offer ourselves some kindness. This is hard. These are difficult situations, and often there's a real unfairness here, and yet we still have to deal with them. So we can honor how we do that without having to be perfect. <laughs>